Bella Gazzettari, ben ritrovati con un nuovo video qui sulla Gazzetta MMA. Ci sono stati un sacco di cambiamenti negli ultimi giorni, soprattutto per quanto riguarda UFC 295, che ha visto il main event saltare davvero a pochissime settimane, pochissimi giorni dall'inizio della card. Il main event originario era John Jones contro Stipe Miocic, con John Jones che andava a difendere la cintura dei pesi massimi contro il GOAT, in discusso dei pesi massimi Stipe Miocic Entrambi i fighters secondo me avrebbero con buona probabilità disputato l'ultimo incontro della loro carriera E poi è arrivato proprio ieri l'infortunio di John Jones, infortunio al pettorale Che non gli ha permesso di prendere parte alla, alla card e all'incontro E dunque la UFC ha preso una decisione abbastanza strana Perché non è andata a sostituire John Jones Ma è andata a sostituire entrambi i fighter cambiando completamente l'incontro L'unica cosa che è rimasta uguale è la categoria di peso, ovvero quella dei pesi massimi. Il, il co-main event, quello tra Pereira e il samurai della Repubblica Ceca, Proachka, è stato spostato a main event e eh, come co-main event è stato scelto l'inglese Tom Aspinal contro il russo Sergei Pavlovic. Ora, questi due che sono dunque andati a sostituire John Jones e Stipe Miocic sono due fighter che hanno accettato l'incontro davvero in short notice, all'ultimo. E ragazzi, considerando quello che è successo agli UFC 294, con Volkanovski che ha accettato l'incontro in short notice e ha perso, con Kamaru Usman che ha accettato l'incontro in short notice e ha perso, è molto interessante secondo me andare a analizzare le parole dell'inglese Thomas Pinal, che io reputo uno dei migliori pesi massimi al mondo in questo momento, un fighter che è molto tecnico, un fighter tutto tondo, bravo in piedi, bravo a terra, bravo davvero in qualsiasi aspetto del combattimento, un fighter che tra l'altro si era recentemente infortunato a quel ginocchio in una maniera davvero brutta, che però sembra aver recuperato davvero in toto. Quindi vi riporto l'intervista tradotta, le prime parole tradotte di eh, Tom Aspinal, dove parla di come gli è stato offerto l'incontro, di come vede l'incontro, di come vede il suo avversario e di che sogni ha per andarsi a prendere l'oro e magari poi poterlo difendere proprio contro John Jones. Quindi prima di lasciarvi alla traduzione dell'intervista, vi ricordo come sempre di spolliciare per supportare il mio lavoro, di iscrivervi al canale se ancora non siete iscritti, di attivare la campanella delle notifiche per non perdervi i prossimi video. Vi ricordo tra l'altro che in settimana uscirà il prossimo documentario targato La Gazzetta MMA proprio sul samurai della Repubblica Ceca, Proachka. Quindi rimanete sintonizzati ragazzi, attivate quella campanellina così appena esce il documentario potrete vederlo direttamente. Tra l'altro se vi siete persi i documentari precedenti c'è una bella playlist all'interno del canale che potrete andare a visionare con nomi importantissimi come Hamza Chimaev, Leon Edwards, John Jones, Marvin Vettori, Adesagna e tantissimi, tantissimi altri. Quindi adesso vi lascio la traduzione dell'intervista. Fatemi sapere qui sotto nei commenti che cosa ne pensate. Secondo me ne esce fuori un fighter con un mindset davvero, davvero forte. Fucking tired, man. Fucking 4 a.m. calls. Yeah, as well. Multiple days in a row, huh? Fucking tired. Give yeah. me a break. <laughs> you can have a break in two weeks. I'll be all right. I'm going to train three times a day now. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm all at it. What's, uh, let's start the interview. This is, this is how we're going to slow roll into it. So, when did you know that you were going to New York not to be part of the TNT crew, but to go and have a fist fight? Uh, so I got it confirmed officially about three hours ago at this point. Nice. So it's now about 7 a.m. UK time. I found out at like 4 a.m. I uh, oh. got the old middle of the night phone call. And they were like, oh, uh, sorry, just, just I'll just be quick. Just take some sleep. I'm like, how the fuck am I supposed to sleep? <laughs> And she just told me that I'm fighting for the heavyweight title. Like, I can't just go back to sleep. So, yeah, I've been up, been up since four. Did... Uh... So they obviously gave you a heads up yesterday that something might be going on. Um, when they called you, did you know, like, as the phone was ringing, like, I'm getting a fight? Like, did you just know before you even answered? Or did you think, like, oh, maybe they're calling to say there's no big deal? Did you just have a feeling inside you, like, I'm going to be fighting for gold here? Yeah, of course. Because I think if if I wasn't fighting, I think they'd have just done it by text, to be honest. Yeah. I think uh, I don't think they would have called me again because, like you say, obviously, you know, because I told you. But originally, they called me and was like... Uh, first of all, it's one of the, the highest up people in the UFC, never calls you. So he called me, I was like, what's going on? 
and he called and said um are you healthy that's the first thing he asked he was like are you healthy i'm like yeah i'm healthy why what's going on he's like listen some crazy shit's going on with this uh this new york card are you ready to fight in like two weeks and i said i can be if you want me to be ready i'll be ready in two weeks he said well i'll just have to let you know tomorrow yeah so obviously i was waiting did my full day's training and everything i actually sparred yesterday sparred really well as well uh, felt like i had a lot of gas in the tank and stuff and yeah they just woke me up with the call that it's all it's all going ahead me and uh me and old, old mate Pavlovich, third time lucky, in it. Third time lucky, I've fighting twice before. Were you surprised it was Pav? Were you sort of expecting John or Stipe to be on the other side? Were you surprised when he's like, okay, it's you for the uh, interim title, but it's you against Pavlovich, not one of those other two guys? I weren't too bothered. They're all tough fights, aren't they? I think that Pavlovich is the most dangerous, to be honest. I think he's the most dangerous guy in the UFC. I think... Um, to be honest, it's fucking the most dangerous situation you can have. Fighting yeah. the most dangerous guy in the UFC on two weeks' notice, but uh, I'm willing to put it all on the line. Do you know what I mean? This is my absolute dream. And fucking, I'm doing a Bisping, aren't I? Bisping yes. did it on two weeks' notice. Bisping did it on two weeks' notice and won against Rockhold, so why can't I do it? What, uh, what sort of shape are you in? Is it two weeks? Like, because Volk obviously, you know, came off the couch, as he said. Are you off the couch or are you out of the gym? No, I've been at the gym. I've been at the gym. Okay. I'm a dedicated guy. I, I'm in the gym anyway. Um, I would have liked longer than two weeks, you know what I mean? But okay, you got to do what you got to do. So I'll be ready. I, no excuses there, mate. I'll be I'll be ready to go and I'm coming to win. You know what I mean? I'm not coming to uh, make excuses or anything. Like the narrative of this fight isn't going to be, oh, I've taken the fight on two weeks notice. No, right. I'm fucking coming to win. I'm knocking people out pretty quick myself. And if I land, he's going down, not me. But we're both massive punchers, mate. We're the both. I, I have the shortest fight time in the UFC right now, and he has the second shortest fight time in the UFC right now. We're both absolutely massive punchers. Granted, he's probably punches a little bit harder than me, but that's fine. Like if I hit you, you're going over either way. Um, and I think I mix up everything really well, so it's not just you know me coming at him with hands that he's got to worry about. There's all kinds of different stuff going on, so. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens, man. Heavyweight MMA at the highest level, literally. Man, like you must be. When, sometimes when people have fought for an interim belt, like we've seen Justin Gage before, being like, "Oh no, it's not the real belt." But for you, do you feel like no? This is this is as justified to be the heavyweight champion cha championship as any other fight right now. Like, do you feel like you'll be the real champion if you win this? Well, the champion's unavailable for a year, so uh, yeah, I, I'm the I'm the champ until the champ comes back when I win. Um, and then I'll friggin' beat the champ as well if he wants it. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I, it doesn't really concern me either way. I'm not really too bothered about interim belts or non-interim belts and all that shit. Like, I'm just happy that I got a fight because I'm healthy. I'm good to go. I really didn't want to wait till next year uh, because I'm in the gym. Like I say, I'm coming. I'm coming off. Uh, like a year break because I did my knee so uh, while I'm healthy I want to take advantage of it as much as I can so I'm just really happy that I get to fight anyone and with it being for an interim belt that's even better 